Hello guys, thank you for clicking on my video. My name is Alex and I am going to give my final thoughts on ukulele. I've been playing it for the last two weeks. I've uploaded eight videos on it and I think it's time to finally, you know, close the book on this chapter. Ukulele is a 3D platformer released recently by Platonic Games. It is a kind of a spiritual successor to the Banjo-Kazooie series. Um, the Banjo-Kazooie games are one of my favorites ever, so when this game came out, I was definitely interested, hence why I recorded several videos on it. So that's why I want to talk about it one last time. So let's go over the pros real fast. The pros, the good things about this game are, number one, the play control I think is, is pretty good. It's pretty smooth. You get used to controlling Yuka and Laylee, and I do mean just Yuka and Laylee. Um, they control pretty good. They run, jump in a natural way. You always feel like you're in, in control. Number two, another good thing is the amount of moves that you can learn. Um, I count about 13 moves that you can learn from Trouser. Um, you know, everything from a simple attack to the high jump, flying, rolling, the, the different sonar moves, the spin dash, invincibility, the ton grapple, you know, the ability to eat those egg things and take their, their, you know, their type, you know, make yourself shoot water or make your, or electrify yourself so you can charge things up. Um, the game has lots of moves and it uses them almost all very often. Um, I think it, it keeps the, the gameplay somewhat fresh because you are kind of forced to use all the all these different moves so that's good number three the level themes i think are, are pretty good they're pretty inventive they're they're pretty nice um tribal stack tropics is a nice take on the classic grass world you know almost every platformer game has that you know traditional um grass area uh you know that's always green and you know, easy and whatnot. And I think Ukulele has a pretty good, you know, grass level, so to speak. Tribal Stock Tropics with its temple theme and, you know, jungle theme and all that. It, it, it works and it looks pretty nice. Um, as does Glitter Glaze uh, Glacier. I think it's probably the weakest of the themes because it's just a kind of a generic snow level, but it's still okay. Moody Maze is exactly that. It's a, it's a moody, you know, marsh, you know, it, it's not spooky. You know, and it's not cheery. It, it really, it really nails that moody feeling, and the green, the palette, uh, in that in that world is really nice and appealing. Casino, pretty unique theme. The only other casino level that I can think of is that uh, casino level in the Sonic game. I think it's Sonic Two or something. That's like the only game that I know of that uses a casino theme. So that's pretty, still pretty original. And then Galleon Galaxy. You know, I'm a sucker for space themes. I'm a sucker for, you know, outer space, asteroids, comets, and stuff like that. And that level definitely nails that theme. You know, along with the pirate ships, the galleons, it, it, it works really nice. And they're definitely nice to look at. Another pro, maybe not so strong, is the dialogue. I think, I think the dialogue at times can be pretty funny. At the very least, you can tell that they put in a lot of work in the dialogue. Maybe sometimes the jokes don't land, or maybe sometimes the jokes are overly generic and bland. But it, but I think they go. Um, they I think the dialogue is better than most games. Um, this this game feels more G rated, I guess you could say, almost more family friendly than the banjo games. It seems, which is kind of odd. I thought this game would be edgier since it's an indie game. But I still I still think the dialogue is is a is a point in the game's favor. And then finally, the last pro is just the variety of, of things you can do in the game. Um, it doesn't get too stale because you're you're either platforming around as you can lady or you're riding in that cartos cart, you know, uh, riding on the on the rails collecting gems. Every level has a transformation, which completely changes how you control your character. Transform into a flower, a snowplow, the piranha fish, the helicopter, and the galleon ship. The, all the transformations are very different, and you can argue as to their quality of the gameplay, but, it, but they definitely 
you can't argue that they don't add more gameplay variety, and that's that's nice. There's also the quiz, which I know most people don't like, and I don't like the quiz, but again, it adds to the variety of what you can do in the game, and that's nice. The game doesn't get overly boring doing the same thing, because it does mix it up. Same with the um, uh, the Rextro uh, mini games. also. Those help to, to change up the pace. But now we're moving on to the cons, the, the negative points uh, for the game. The first one being the dull characters. You know, there's literally in my mind only one character that is like fully fleshed out that actually has a personality that you can actually, you know, understand in a way. And that's capital B. Capital B is like the only character that I feel that you, you, you hear from him and you understand him and that he's funny and he's smart and at least you know what he's about and what he's trying to do and what he's trying to accomplish. He moves around, he has different animations. Uh, he, he, he feels fleshed out and he's like the only one. The main characters, bland. I know Laylee is supposed to be like a sarcastic Kazooie type character, but I didn't think she was that sarcastic or sassy enough. I think they could have done a lot more to make her more like that humor, you know, harsh humor, sarcastic character that Kazooie was. Um, trouser, you know, generic. Not only uh, did the characters feel generic, but even when they're talking to one another, it feels like they're not really having a conversation. It's like they ignore what they just said because the interactions are just not there. Along with limited animations, it seems like every every sub-character is like planted. They don't ever really move. You never see them move. Trouser does move technically from area to area, but you don't see him move. You don't see him slither or walk or hop. It's like they're just um, moving them from place to place magically, you know, while you're not looking. And it just makes everyone feel stale and like they're not real, like they're just cardboard cutouts. It's a little hard to dis to explain, but I, I think everyone can agree that the characters just don't stand out, including the main characters. The next negative point on the game is the Rextro minigames. Yeah, they do add variety because each one is different, all five of them, but they're still bad. They're still not fun to play and they go on for a really long time. Um, you have to play each minigame twice to get both pages, and it's, it's man, that's just, it takes so much, at least for me, it took much, so much, um, uh, you know, work, so much effort just to do it again because they're so dull. The controls are bad, especially the, the very first one where you're running in the cart, the go-kart. The controls are unresponsive. You're doing the same thing in like four out of the five, which is just collecting quills. Um, you know, a Flappy Bird clone, a Runner clone, an arena, a simple arena game. They're not unique, they're not original, and they're boring and they're not fun. The next con in my mind is the enemy variety. It seems to me like the, the game literally only has two kinds of enemies. The enemies that just charge at you, which are like the, the corplets and the eyeball things, they just charge at you when, when, they, when you get in range. That's not fun. There's no strategy involved in, in killing them. You just, you just go at them and hit them. The only reason they ever hurt you is because you don't see them coming or because they just throw so many at you. And then the, and then the other enemy is that flying bee thing which shoots the homing uh, stingers at you and explode. Uh, and that's it. There's also the, like the, the big enemy that sleeps, but there's like four of them in the whole, in the whole game. Um, it's just it's just bad. The very low enemy quality and enemy quantity. It, I think I think if you removed all the enemies, the game wouldn't even lose that much because they don't add uh, much to the gameplay at all. Another con: the quiz. You know, you have to do this quiz minigame three times uh, during during the whole game and each time is very annoying um, it's not even like original because you know they obviously took this from the banjo games and and it's just not fun no one wants to answer trivia questions in the middle of their action game right the action platformer 
the questions aren't entirely like funny and they're not entirely you know worth it uh it's really just a time sink the whole quiz is just a time sink and this game does not need a time sink this isn't like a mobile game that's designed to waste people's time right this is a full game that you pay full price for there's no reason to slow down the game by putting in this this quiz which is just not clever and fun to do and it even has some gotcha questions in it like it'll ask you how long you've been playing like literally how long have you been playing like five hours ten hours fifteen hours and no one knows that no one keeps track of that so you're almost guaranteed to get it wrong and it's just it's not fun it's it's frustrating and annoying another con is the music i know the mu music can be very subjective but i feel like platonic kind of went out of their way to promote the fact that they got the original composers of the original banjo games so it almost felt like hey look we got these cool guys you can expect great music and the music for the most part is not great the main themes for each level are pretty forgettable the only you know average good one is the ca the capital casino one that one stands out to me as do the cartos minigame songs those songs are really upbeat and pretty cool actually and i would have rather seen those songs be the main theme because what we got is 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 not good it's not memorable it's it's nothing to the quality of the banjo games it's, i know it's the same composers but it, it just i don't know what happened i i don't know what happened they couldn't get it done i think for this game which is unfortunate so that's mostly just disappointing more than just being bad and then we come to i think one of the main issues of the game and that is the boss battles the boss battles are a huge negative point to this game they they really they really not only did some of them frustrate me but the boss battles i think are really what made me think less of this game and of its developers like it just felt like they just didn't know what they were doing um rampo the furnace the tentacle boss the um uh, the inept actually no i take that back the rampo furnace tentacle and Planetra, right? Those uh, four bosses were just, they were all frustrating. Furnace in particular was just a weird boss battle where you're trying to hit this guy that's moving really fast. Half of the time he's not even on the screen. You can't even, you don't even know if you're hitting him. And then if you, also when you hit him, he gets like slightly smaller so you can't tell. There's no feedback that you're actually doing damage to him. The tentacle boss is okay, but you're fighting them in water, and it's slow, and it's not fun. Planetra was incredibly difficult. You were basically playing a bullet hell shooter, but you're using a slow-moving galleon to fight her, and the phases are all the same, and it's boring. The only, the only really good fight, in my opinion, is Inept, the Capital Casino robot that you're fighting on track because the phases are all distinct and fun and even though I died about five six times during that fight I didn't I didn't find it frustrating because it was an actual fun interesting original fight where you're you know you have to decipher his patterns you have to know when to speed up when to slow down when to shoot your cannon that was a real good boss and then the capital B fight the capital B fight should be epic it should be awesome because it's the final boss and it just wasn't the, the, the only way I can really describe it is that it was long. It wasn't horrible, it wasn't great, but it was certainly very long. Numerous phases, you only have to use about three moves to beat them, right? Shooting eggs, flying, and the, the super sonar move. Like, I th in a final boss, you know, I'm, I'm expecting, you know, you have to use everything that you've learned, you know? or bring in elements from throughout the game like bring in the ghosts that you capture maybe they help you through the fight or maybe trouser comes in and helps you with the fight or something um use themes from the levels you know you want to wrap up the game in some way um or at least make the fight super epic in a fun cool way maybe you have to transform 
into all your different transformations something something special and there and that's i think that's the right word there was nothing special about the the final fight other than that it was really really long and ultimately very dull that was that, that was a big con but not as big as my final point my final issue and i think it's the absolute biggest issue and it's pretty much the deal breaker with ukulele and that is the overall level design uh, I think a 3D platformer, in my opinion, the strongest aspect of a 3D platformer should be the world and its geometry and how it's laid out. And in ukulele, it's not laid out, I think, in a very fun way. Tribal Stack Tropics, I think, is the only level where I ever, you know, achieved that, you know, platforming nirvana, which is what I call it. When you're jumping on platformer on platforms, and the platforms are moving and you're you get like into a rhythm you get this cool momentum going or you're jumping and dodging and it feels natural and you're making progress and you're climbing higher and you're getting further and it, and it feels cool it feels natural it feels like a platformer tribal stock traffic's hot had that in, in a couple areas and then that's it i pretty much never really felt it anywhere else the only times it came close, I came close to feeling that, was during the ring challenges. When a bunch of rings pop up and you have to like jump through them. Those challenges were fun. They were legit fun. Also when you're like sliding down a ramp and again you're having to go through rings and dodge obstacles. Again, that's sort of fun. But it, it, it wasn't done in a particularly special way and it, and it was done very rarely. Most of the puzzles to get the pages were either like insultingly easy or frustrating because uh, like you don't know you, they don't make it clear what you're supposed to do. The pages that you get, you know, with the transformations are don't really take advantage of the transformations except for the, the ship in the final world in Galleon Galaxy. They do make use of the ship in interesting ways. But the flower and the snow plow and the piranhas, they're, they're not really used to their full extent. It's, it was almost pointless. The levels just weren't designed in a very smart way. Some puzzles are just hitting a switch and then the, and then the page is available. Um, you know, there was a couple spots where you have to eat like an ice egg and then a fire egg and then a, and then a heavy egg and then a... You have to electrify yourself. And those are really fun when you have to mix and match different egg powers and solve like a really long complex puzzle. Like the very last page in Tribal Stack when you have to destroy rocks with the grenades and then destroy the, the enemies and uh, you know hit switches. Those puzzles are really good. They force you to think and to use the different powers. But there's literally only like two or three instances in the whole game where you have to do that. And I think that's just huge, uh, a huge wasted potential. Um, the platforming is just, the game virtually brings nothing unique, nothing that I haven't seen in platformers that released 20 years ago. Um, it's, it's just unfortunate. It's, it's, I think I can sum up the level design and the game really as disappointing. Um, you know, it's rarely fun and you know wasted wasted opportunity i think all this time we haven't had a traditional 3d platformer you know minus the mario games but that's a different kind of platformer but all this time um you know they were developing this game this indie game they they know they knew their audience and yeah i mean you could say they catered to it but they didn't necessarily make a, a fun cool game so yeah that, that, those are my thoughts. In summary, basically, you know, if you have a, if you have a, if you have a need to play a 3D platformer, you're probably best just getting a Nintendo console and playing one of the Mario games, you know, or replaying Banjo, because this game is honestly, it's not even as good as those games. It's not even as good as those 20-year-old games, and it's unfortunate. I cannot recommend this game at 60 bucks. I think it's already down to 40 bucks on humblebundle.com. But even at 40 bucks, I cannot recommend it. Um, if you if you love platformers, you're gonna get frustrated by this game. 
And if you don't like platformers, then there's no reason to pick this up. So yeah, that's unfortunate. The game, the game is disappointing. But I, I still am happy that I that I played it and that I made these videos. I'm glad that I was able to make a series and upload it. And I hope you guys um, enjoyed the series as well. I am very curious as to what you guys think about this game. If you agree with what I say, if you don't, please leave comments. I want to hear what you say. I want to hear if you guys also like the Banjo Kazooie series or just any other 3D, 3D platformers that you can think of. I'd love to have the I'd love to have this discussion with you guys. So yeah, again, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. That'd be really cool of you guys, and I will see you guys later.